Lord said, I think thoughts of peace and not of affliction. You will call upon me and I will answer you. And I will lead back your captives from every place. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. To prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins. confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Grant us, we pray, O Lord, O Lord our God, the constant gladness of being devoted to you, for it is full and lasting happiness to serve with constancy the author of all that is good, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. reading from the book of Proverbs. A capable wife, who can find her? She is far more precious than jewels. The heart of her husband trusts in her, and he will have no lack of grain. She does him good and not harm all the days of her life. She seeks wool and flax and works with willing hands. She considers a field and buys it. With the fruit of her hands, she plants a vineyard. She girds herself with, strong, with strength and makes her arms strong. She perceives that her merchandise is profitable. Her lamp does not go out at night. She opens her hand to the poor and reaches out her hands to the needy. She opens her mouth with wisdom, and the teaching of kindness is on her tongue. Her children rise up and call her happy. Her husband, too, and he praises her. Many women have done excellently, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceitful, and beauty is vain. But a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Give her a share in the fruit of her hands, and let her works be praised in the city gates. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial psalm is, Blessed is everyone who fears the Lord. Blessed is everyone who fears the Lord. Blessed is everyone who fears the Lord, who walks in his ways. You shall eat the fruit of the labor of your hands. You shall be happy, and it shall go well with you. Blessed is everyone who fears the Lord. Your wife will be like a fruitful vine 
with, within your house. Your children will be like olive shoots around your table. Blessed is everyone who fears the Lord. Thus shall be the man be blessed who fears the Lord. The Lord bless you from Zion. May you see the prosperity of Jerusalem all the days of your life. Blessed is everyone who fears in the Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Now, concerning the times and the seasons, brothers and sisters, you do not need to have anything written to you. For you yourselves know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. When they say, there is peace and security, then sudden destruction will come upon them as labor pains come upon a pregnant woman, and there shall be no escape. But you, beloved, are not in darkness, for that day to surprise you like a thief. You are all children of light and children of the day. We are not of the night or of darkness. So then, let us not fall asleep as others do, but let us keep awake and be sober. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus spoke this parable to his disciples. For it is as if a man going on a journey summoned his slaves and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one. One, each according to his ability. Then he went away. The one who had received the five talents went off at once and traded with them and made five more talents. In the same way, the one who had the two made two more talents. But the one who had received the one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those slaves came and settled accounts with them. Then the one who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five more talents, saying, Master, you handed over to me five talents. See, I have made five more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And the one with two talents said, also came forward saying, Master, you handed over to me two talents. See, I have made two more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Then the one who had received the one talent also came forward, saying, Master, I knew that you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid, and I went and I hid your talent in the ground. Here you have what is yours. But his master replied, you wicked and lazy slave, you knew, did you, that I reaped where I did not sow and gathered where I did not scatter? Then you ought to have invested my money with bankers, and on my return I would have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to the one with ten talents. For all those who have, more will be given." and they will have an abundance. 
but from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. As for this worthless slave, throw him into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. The Gospel of the Lord. Imagine for 20 years of your life you saved every possible penny that you could. I guess we don't have pennies anymore. Every possible nickel that you could. You just, you chose to, you know, just just survive. You never took a vacation. You worked whatever overtime you could. Uh, you know, you wore poor clothes. You ate uh, terrible food just so you could save all this money, and you did this for 20 years. At the end of 20 years, you took that money and you brought it to an investor. Now, what type of care would you expect that investor to have in your money? What would you expect that, how would you expect that investor to treat that money that you had worked and sacrificed so hard for? I'll give you another scenario. So my parents were huge proponents of Catholic education. Uh, They sent all five of us to Catholic school at at great expense to them. I remember at one point in the game, my parents were giving uh, a third of their entire income to put all five of us in Catholic school. Um, And I remember this very vividly in grade three or four. um, I was bored at school one day and... uh, so I started carving crayons with my pen lid, and that's basically all I did all day long. And uh, my father was called to school, and he said um, he, they gave him kind of the scenario, and my father was never someone to, he wasn't really a reactive person, but when I got, uh, when he came back home from the reporting that he had, because I'd been wasting my entire day, uh, he said, I saw some of the crayons you carved. And I was like, well, I'm pretty sure he would have saw all of them. But my father had figured that if I had been at this all day, I should have carved a lot more, you know, not just one or two. But I, I kind of look back on this, and I, and I kind of mar- I marvel. You know, my parents made a lot of sacrifices so I could go to Catholic school. I'm, I'm kind of surprised that they didn't, demand something of that, you know, like, hey, you know, I have to work a couple months a year so that you can go to Catholic school. Why are you messing around? Like, why, what what are you doing there? You know, I'm kind of surprised my parents didn't cancel that whole thing and and think, like, this is a bad investment for the money, because I never really tried my entire school time. So that's a bad example. But when we really look at it, we can see that I never really had a mission when I went to school. I just sort of showed up there. I showed up there and I survived my 12 or 13 years, however long it takes, I can't remember. Um, But I survived there. I didn't have any mission in mind. You know, just like you and I would expect that investor to have a mission when they are investing our money, we too also are going to have some expectations about us. You see, the master of these slaves did not kind of jip the slaves. We have to remember what a talent is. A talent was between 20 kilos and maybe as much as 55 or 70 kilos of solid metal, either silver or gold. So we can, back in the day of Jesus' time, it would take a laborer, 20 years of labor without spending the money on just his wages for 20 years would buy one talent. So it was a substantial thing that the owner had entrusted, whether he gave him five, two, or one. You know, it was over, well over what we would consider a million or two million dollars for just the one talent. That's what it was. So he entrusted something to them and he gave them a specific task. He gave them a specific tact, a mission. This is what you're to do. And we ourselves have to ask ourselves this question too. What exactly is our mission? Well, we know it's been laid out very clear to us. 
Jesus gave his apostles a mission. He gave all of his followers a mission, all the baptized a mission. And his mission to us is this. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Teach them to obey all that I have commanded you. That is our mission as Catholics. We've all been given this mission. You know, I wonder if my parents had sat down with me on a, on a kind of a daily basis and said, like, hey, what are, what are you going to school today for? Uh, probably not to carve crayons, right? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, so what are you going there for? Well, you're going to learn. You know, you're going to learn. You're, you're, you're there to, to, to figure out, uh, to, to become intelligent. You're there to develop something, right? You're not just there to, to take up space in the classroom. But a lot of times, we ourselves, when we don't have this idea of mission, or we're not connected to it, we're going to end up kind of spinning our lives. You know, if at the end of five or six years, you came to your investor, and you're like, what have you done? Well, I've carved a lot of crayons. You'd be like, no, that's, that's not acceptable. That's not acceptable. That is not your mission. That is not what I gave you this money for. And it's the same thing with us and God. We have to ask ourselves the question, why has God granted us all this? Why has God given us our gifts and talents? Why has God allowed us to share in His grace? Why does God allow us to partake of His body and blood, soul, and divinity? Why did God adopt us as His sons and daughters? Why did God empower you and I with the gifts of the Holy Spirit? Why did God give us the grace of ordination or the grace of marriage? Why has God done all this? For a mission. For a purpose. And that is, that mission, go forth. Make disciples. People who follow Christ. People who give themselves to Christ. Baptize them. Bring them also into my family. I want everyone to be part of my family. I want everyone to share in the joy of the Father's kingdom. Teach them all that I've commanded you. Why? Because that's the only way they can live their life epically, as I've desired them to do. So for us as Christians, we must keep this before our eyes and our minds. If we, if we don't keep our mission before our eyes and our minds, uh, we're going to be failing at it. And I was thinking a beautiful thing to do each evening would be to ask ourselves the question, would God say of my day, well done, good and faithful servant, enter into the joy of your master? Now, there's many ways that God is going to give us talents to use each day of our lives. We do have our gifts and talents, for sure. But we also have to remember how God uh, does things to us. Like, so he gives us obstacles throughout our day. You know, maybe a difficult person to deal with. Someone who, well, they, they call this beyond our comfort zone, you know. Someone who we'd have to stretch ourselves a bit to, to accommodate or to reach out to. Those are the things that God grants us on a daily basis. You know, and God asks us each day, how did you do? How how did you live out your mission today? You know, could you say at the end of the day you progressed in what you were supposed to have done? You know, another thing that's very important for us as Christians, otherwise we lose focus, we lose the way, is that we have to take time each day with God to assist us in our mission because our mission is kind of scary. You know, that's probably why we don't fulfill it. Because our mission is to go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them all that I have commanded you. A very scary thing to do at any time in the world's existence, but scary now, for sure. So we have to stay in contact with God on a daily basis for us to stay uh, focused on our mission. And that, that takes daily prayer. It takes daily reading of sacred scripture and asking God, okay, God, what what does this have to do with me in my life? See, in the second reading, it talks about, hey, don't fall asleep. Don't fall asleep. You guys don't know when God is going to come, so stay alert. Keep your mission in focus. What are you here to do? What are you here to do? What are you here to accomplish? You know, on our own, we won't have the strength and courage to fulfill that mission. That's why we need daily contact with God. We need a daily refocusing of our lives. Okay, what, what am I doing? You no, know, we can start off our day with that, the mission in mind. Make disciples, baptize, teach them all that God has commanded them to do. 
And then at the end of our day, we could have our final examination is, would God say to me, well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of your master. We must keep these things in mind because this is the pathway to heaven. Every one of us here wants to go to heaven. None of us want to be thrown out into the outer darkness of wailing and gnashing of teeth. It's kind of an interesting thing. It's always there's like these two huge differences. <laughs> there's the joy of the master and there's the wailing and gnashing of teeth. This is why we must keep our mission in front of our eyes. We have to ask God to strengthen us for this mission so that we don't, in fear, uh, not fulfill it. God is inviting you and I. He believes in you and I. He's strengthening you and I. He's trying to focus you and I. That's why we have to have time with God each day. We have to have that time where we read our sacred scriptures. Lord, what are you telling me to do? When we come to the Mass, we come to the different sacraments, confession, uh, using our confirmation, our baptism, we have to ask the Lord, strengthen me for this mission. This is my purpose on earth. This is what I'm called to do, so help me. You know, because we're going to have to go beyond our personal comfort in order to fulfill this mission that God has called us to. And that's not going to happen on our own strength. So God has invited us into a mission. He's blessed us for this mission. He's created us for a very specific purpose. And he knows that the purpose that he's created for us is the ultimate fulfilling way to live our lives. But we're not going to be able to do that unless we ask for help. We're not going to be able to overcome our weaknesses, our woundedness, unless we offer God, unless we take that time with God, he says. So I encourage you, if you're not taking time with sacred scripture, start with five minutes a day. Whenever you're reading the Bible, I recommend the New Testament to start with at least. Always ask God, God, what are you trying to tell me here? What do you need to show me? How can you help me fulfill my mission today? We want to hear God. We want to hear God at the end of each day, and especially at the end of our lives. Well done. Well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of your master. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, 
who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, gathered as one to celebrate the good things we have received from our God, let us ask him to prompt in us prayers that are worthy of his hearing. We pray for our Holy Father Francis, for Pope Emeritus Benedict, for our Bishop Joseph. For their health, intentions, and constant growth in faith, hope, and charity, for this we pray to the Lord. Lord, we pray for the grace to truly fulfill the mission that you have called us to. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, I pray that we can keep our hearts and minds. Um, just give us the desire to hear you say, Well done, good and faithful servant. For this we pray to the Lord. We pray for the sick and the dying, those who will die today, those with different infectious diseases, coronavirus, that God may grant mercy and healing to them. For those who work in the healing of these diseases, that they may use ethical and moral means. For this we pray to the Lord. We pray for all of our deceased relatives and friends, especially those written in the Book of the Dead. That God may grant eternal rest to their souls. For this we pray to the Lord. We pray for proper discernments on the new church. For this we pray to the Lord. This Mass we pray in a special way for the souls of Dorothea, Roberto, and Romeo Tagalog. For this we pray to the Lord. In a moment of silence we offer up our own prayers and petitions. Pray to the Lord. Lord the prayer for vocations. O oh God, you have chosen the apostles to make disciples of all nations, and by baptism and confirmation have called all of us to build up your holy church. We earnestly implore you to choose from among us your children, many priests, brothers, and sisters, who will love you with their whole heart and will gladly spend their entire lives to make you known and loved by all. May the petition of your church be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, so that we may receive from your mercy what we cannot ask out of confidence in our own merit, through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands it will become our spiritual drink. My 
sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant, O Lord, we pray that what we offer in the sight of your majesty may obtain for us the grace of being devoted to you and gain us the prize of everlasting happiness through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for we know it belongs to your boundless glory, that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity, and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exalted praise as we have Holy, holy, holy one, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. similar way when supper was ended he took the chalice and giving you thanks he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying take this all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin do this in memory of me mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church 
in recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Granted, we who are nursed by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Albert the Great, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope and Joseph our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, who are departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life. Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who we'll live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be
by Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you.
happiness to place my hope in God, the Lord. Let us pray. We have partaken of these gifts of the sacred mysteries, humbly imploring, O Lord, that what your Son commanded us to do in memory of him may bring us growth in charity through Christ our Lord. So three things. Um, this Sunday is the 33rd Sunday in Ordinary Time. Next Sunday will be the Feast of Christ the King, the last Sunday in Ordinary Time. And then we move into the Advent season. I really encourage you to start thinking now of what you're going to do for Advent. Remember, these seasons within the church are always meant to prepare our souls for heaven. You know, um, so a good idea is to find some way during this Advent season, maybe learn uh, a, a, good, a better way of praying or something so that we can enter more deeply into a relationship with Christ. Christmas is supposed to be a transformative event in our lives, not just something that we remember year after year and then leave unchanged. Each one of these liturgical seasons is meant to help us progress in the journey, uh, help us go into our mission. So I really encourage you to, to keep that in mind. It'll be two Sundays from now. We'll be in Advent. And now then for former Sundays will be Christmas. And we always want to make sure these things are, are doing something to us. Preparing us for what our ultimate purpose of life is. Second thing is um, uh, the young fellow who comes up here the odd time, uh, Deacon Richard Conlon. He'll be ordained on December 11th at the Holy Rosary Cathedral. And I was hoping as a parish we could make a gift to him, either a chasuble or a chalice. So if you'd like to donate to that. Uh, your donations would be gratefully accepted, and then as a parish, we will present uh, to him whatever he feels he needs more of. Uh, if you make a donation, though, it will not be counted as a charitable, uh, tax-donatable thing because it's given as a gift to someone else. You can make the donations to the office uh, through the normal means, cash, check, or EMT, PayPal, whatever you'd like to do. Thirdly, uh, we're still uh, looking for your responses about... Uh, the, the discernment of the new church. So we'd really appreciate it if you could, if you haven't done it already, to please uh, fulfill or fill out the form. Uh, some people have complained that, you know, they don't like to put their email on the, the form, but as Catholics, we should be, we are going to have to stand up for what we believe. You know, if you are totally against this thing here, you have to stand up for what you believe and, and, and take to be true. You know, that's part of the discernment thing as a parish, that we have to stand for what we believe. This is a, a safe way to try that. You know, if you don't like what's going on, then you have to tell us. You can't just go along and say, oh, well, what does my opinion matter? We're asking for your opinion. As, as people, we need to put it out there. So I, I really encourage you, take the time, put, put your thoughts down. We need that make good discernment. That's, that's part of our duty as Christians to, to engage in these things. We can't just stand by and say, well, I don't want to offend anyone. Um, that's not going to cut it for us. So please, take the time, do that. Help us discern this. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Father, I offer thee the most precious blood of
thy divine Son, Jesus, in union with the Mass is said throughout the world today, for all the holy souls in purgatory, for sinners everywhere, for sinners in the universal church, for those in my own temple and within my family, 